Integration is the area under each signal, and it tells us the number of protons in that signal. And so here we have the proton NMR spectrum of benzyl acetate, including the integration values. So the computer calculates the area under the signal. So for example, for this signal, the area under the signal is calculated by the computer and gives us this number. The computer gives us 57.9. For this signal, the computer gives us 23.1. And finally, for this signal, we get an integration value of 35.4. Let's go back up here to the dot structure of benzyl acetate and let's see how many protons that we need to account for in our proton NMR spectrum. This carbon right here has three protons. Let me go ahead and draw those protons in. All right, this carbon has two protons on it and that's five so far. And then on our ring, right, we have five more protons. So going around the ring here, we have five more for a total of 10. So we need to account for 10 protons in our spectrum. All right, so going back to the integration values, you find the smallest integration value. So out of those three numbers, 23.1 is the smallest integration value. And we're going to divide all three integration values by the smallest one. And we'll start with 57.9. So 57.9 divided by 23.1. So let's get out the calculator here, 57.9. Divide that by 23.1, and we get 2.5. So I'll write 2.5 right here. 23.1 divided by 23.1 is obviously equal to 1. And then finally, 35.4, we need to divide that by the smallest integration value. So 35.4 divided by 23.1 gives us about 1.5. So we have 1.5. Here, and this gives us this gives us a ratio of the protons that are giving these three signals. So the ratio would be 2.5 to 1 to 1.5. But you can't have 2.5 protons, right? You can't have half a proton here. And so those aren't the exact number of protons, right? We need to account for 10 protons in our molecule. And so if you think about it, if you multiply these numbers by two. Right? then that gives us what we want, because if you multiply 2.5 by 2, that gives us 5. If you multiply 1 by 2, that gives us 2. If you multiply 1.5 by 2, that gives us 3. And obviously, 5 plus 2 plus 3 gives us 10, and 10 protons is how many protons that we need to account for for our molecule. And so therefore, therefore, this signal right here corresponds to five protons, this signal corresponds to two protons, and this signal corresponds to three protons. So if we go back up here to our dot structure, and I look at these protons, right? So we have three equivalent protons. The chemical shift for these protons, we're next to a carbonyl, so we would expect the chemical shift to be just past two. And that's, of course, what we see right here. So the shift is just past two. This signal represents three protons, and it's these three protons right here. All right, next, let's look at these two protons. So these two protons are next to an oxygen, right? So the oxygen deshields that. Well, those two protons, protons are also next to this benzene ring over here. So we would expect a higher chemical shift. Right? And we have two protons, and of course, it's this signal, which corresponds to two protons. Finally, finally, we have five nearly equivalent protons on our ring, so they might not be exactly the same. But for this signal here, right, we have, we have five protons giving us this signal, and it's a little bit more complex than the other ones, but notice, the, notice where it is, right? We're in the aromatic region in terms of a chemical shift. And so this signal must represent these five aromatic protons on our ring. And so this shows you how, how useful the integration values are. They tell, you, they tell you how many protons are giving that signal, which allows you to figure out the structure of the molecule.